Okay, uh, this is a video about Kazam for recording screencasts, such as this one right here, right now. Um, and hopefully this is recording okay. To record Kazam in action using Kazam, uh, I don't think you can normally do that, so I'm actually recording it in a virtual machine here. Uh, so let's hope that this works. Um, so Kazam, uh, install it using whatever package manager you use, aptitude, apt get, apt, uh, or you know your GUI package manager and once it's installed just you know find Kazam and open it up and it has this simple window it's very simple to use it's very straightforward there's a few things I want to go over so you don't make one or two mistakes that I've made first of all I can do video recording that's what the screencast is and it can also do still shots which I actually haven't used it for yet um, but I'm sure that's it I'm sure it works great I mean there's it's easy to take screenshots so now, screencasting, you have options. You have full screen, all screens, window, and area. And so the difference is full screen will record the entire screen of whatever window, uh, the entire screen that the window of Kazam is on. And when you start capturing, it, it minimizes, it hides itself. Um, all screens, if you have multiple monitors, that will be on grade, and you can uh, record all your monitors. Window will record a specific window that you choose. An area will record a area that you choose, you can crop. And so well, I'll get into a minute on, on important things you need to think about while choosing those options. Next, you can choose whether you want to record the mouse cursor or not. Uh, so depending on whether you want the mouse cursor to show up. So while you're recording, if you have that unchecked, you'll still see your mouse cursor, but the video won't show the mouse cursor. Someone like me who's doing tutorials on how to do stuff on a computer, I usually have that checked. Next, you can choose to record sound from speakers and or sound from the microphone. Uh, and this is great. You know, you might not want to have the audio from your computer being recorded, but at the same time, you might, if you're recording a program such as a music application and you want to show it how it works, you would want to record that. And then next is your number for your countdown. So these options, before we go, we're, we're going to get more into that. Let's go up to file preferences to look at more of that. So here you have your options on what speakers and microphones you want to use, and this is important. Get this set up and do a test run before you start recording your videos. So for me, I have multiple audio devices. I have HDMI video card, which also supports audio, even though my monitors don't have speakers. Um, so, And I also have my analog speakers, and then I have a USB headphone uh, set, and then even my USB microphone shows up as an output. Uh, I'm in a virtual mach machine right here, so you don't see all those options. But if you have a program playing audio and you're playing it to your headset while you're recording, but you have this set to your, your speakers, you won't hear it. So you have to make sure you choose the proper output for the program. So whatever, if it's going to your headphones, make sure you choose your headphones in the speaker option. Same with microphone. My headset has a microphone on it, but I also have a analog and a USB microphone. I have to choose the proper one when recording. Uh, and again, do a test run, a few seconds of recording before you do a long video to make sure you have the right settings. It would suck to record a 20 minute video and not have the proper audio recording, which I have done in the past with other applications. Uh, and then you can turn the screen countdown on the, for the splash screen, which I'll show you here in a second. Screencast has your options on frames per second, what video format you want to choose from. There's a few here you can choose from. Uh, and then whether you want to automatically save the file or not, I leave that off. And so when I'm done recording, it asks where I want to save and what I want to call the file. But if you want to automatically all your videos go to one file with a prefix, you can do that here. And similar options under the screenshots, whether you want to auto save, uh, I guess shutter. I, I haven't, again, haven't taken a screenshot with that but those are the options there. So uh, let me get into actually doing a recording here. I'm gonna open up a file browser here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose window and I'm gonna come over here and click on that window. Now, when I start recording, I'll click capture and you can see it does a countdown. Again, we had that option to turn the countdown on and off. And then you also have to choose how many seconds till it starts recording. Uh, I usually leave mine on, but I set it to two seconds because that's usually all I need. But if for some reason you need to start recording and then get things positioned real quick for some reason, uh, you can turn that number up. So right now I'm recording in here and I can go in and out of folders and I can click on all this stuff and it's recording this window and the mouse cursor. 
Um, but since I chose a specific window, this is how one thing that varies from what I've done in the past. So for the last couple of years, I've been using FFmpeg to record videos. I did a tutorial on it years ago. I had a specific little script uh, that I used. But if I wanted to change my audio inputs and outputs, I would have to go and modify my little script. That's one of the things that's nice about Kazam here. I don't have to do that. Um, and I also had set so I could record a certain window, but when I chose that window, basically I'm really doing an area record, not specifically to that window. So watch here, I'm gonna open up a shell here, and you can see the shell is in front of this program. But the screen capture program, Kazam, is actually not recording this at all. It's still recording this window as if that window is not in front of it. So in fact, I'm going to stop my recording here, so I can, you can choose pause recording, uh, and then later on start recording again, or I can just finish, and since I chose not to auto save, it's gonna ask if I wanna open it up in an editor, if you have one set up, or save for later on. If you decide you didn't like the video, you can always hit cancel. I'm gonna hit continue, and I'm just gonna save this as temp, uh, my temp folder 123.mp4. So let me actually go to that file, and I'll open it up in my player here, and I'll jump ahead a little bit so you can see me actually doing stuff in this video. So you can see the mouse cursor, I'm clicking on folders, and it's recording that window, but if I go ahead a little bit, maybe to like here, uh, so at one point here, I this shell window is actually supposed to be right there, right now, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can see that the cursor hand is a hand instead of an arrow. I'm actually dragging the shell in front of it, but you don't see it. This is a good and bad thing depending on your situation. And this is important because I messed up the other day using this functionality. So what's good and bad about this? So any of the other options, whether you select an area, a full window, or all your screens, um, it's gonna record anything in the area that you're recording, whether it's that full screen or a selected area. So it will record multiple windows. Selecting the window, as I just showed you, only records that window. This is great for when I'm recording something, sometimes I forget to turn off a chat program such as I have Google Hangouts running all the time. And since I use Google Fi and Google Voice, all my texts and phone calls all come to my computer and they pop up on the window. So if I forget to, to mute that and someone sends me a text or someone calls, a window will pop up on my screen saying, you know, you got a call from and it shows their name and their phone number, maybe their picture, and if they sent me a text, what it says. And that really sucks when you're recording a screencast to put up on YouTube because now I got to stop my recording and cut out that part of the video and start recording again. Otherwise, everyone's going to get someone's phone number and I shouldn't be giving out people's phone numbers. So that's the good thing about doing the window recording. Bad thing about the window recording is again, it's only recording that window. So if you want to show more than one window, let's say you're showing, you're doing a video on something and then you want to show an example and you, you know, let's say I'm working in GIMP, which uh, may or may not have multiple windows depending on how you're recording. So that's one issue there. Uh, but let's say I'm, I'm in, a, in any photo editing program. I go, oh, let's get a video, uh, a photo offline. And I open up Chrome or Firefox and I go, let's search for this. You're not going to see any of that. Or another example is a mistake I made the other day when I was doing a, a motion tracking video for Blender. You, some of you may have watched this and I'm recording it in a window mode. So I'm only recording the Blender window and I wasn't thinking and I opened up the preference window to show people something. Well, that preference window never showed up on the screen. So there's like 30 seconds of me talking about stuff that isn't there because I'm seeing it on my while well, I'm recording it, but it's not actually being recorded. So that's something you need to think about when you're recording. If you're going to do anything outside of the main window of a program, even if it's a preference or sub window, using this window option, it won't show up. But again, if you only want to record a window, that's a good thing.